Welcome, welcome as you are coming in. Hello, Paula. Um, it's, I, it's my favorite. And as I was chatting with our guests before we opened the room to let you all in, I said, it really is like, um, like welcoming friends. So I'm grateful for your time this afternoon. It is a beautiful day in Spring Green, a gorgeous, gorgeous day for a two show day. Um, Jackie Singleton, who is our stage manager who will be working those two shows is one of our guests today. So I am going to please uh, forgive my dog who will stop barking in a minute. Uh, but Jackie Singleton is, as you can see, joining us from the Hill Theater. I was so happy when I saw her this morning that she is where we wish we all were uh, most of the time, that is true. Um, but we're gathering today to talk about Rough Crossing. Um, and as we try to theme these differently for you all and for ourselves to kind of excite new conversations about deepening our enrichment and connection to these plays, um, we are talking about design elements and what it's like to have a team of collaborators, very much like our team of actors who get so familiar with each other that we're, we're able to make different and better stuff from my perspective. So along with Jackie Singleton, we're being joined by Andy Hansen, who can, there you are, hello Andy, who is a beautiful sound designer and composer who has worked with us for many shows and Bill on many shows outside of his work here. And also Rachel Ann Healy, who is everybody's favorite. There's always a bit of a scrum fight for Rachel's services every season. Uh, it's a delightful tug of war to get her services. And William Brown, the inimitable, inimitable, extraordinary William Brown is having some technical issues, but he will join us as soon as he is able. Um, and in the meanwhile, we get to talk about him, which is as, as I remember from being an actor in Bill's room, watch it when you leave the space. <laughs> but in the in the most wonderful loving way but I want to include um, or say to our audience that please uh, type in any questions you'd like in the Q&A and we will get to them Susan hi it's good to see your name uh, who has one right away which is we are at the rain shortened show on Wednesday night we'll try again next Thursday and notice Jim wasn't wearing the wig Becky showed in her talk that is a really interesting way to start talking about our tech process which is later in this in the um, process. William Brown. He's almost here. He's, He's almost on. here. <laughs> He's creeping through the ether. You're here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, he's oh. frozen now. I don't know. It'll happen. <laughs> I love seeing you in your spaces. Rachel, you're at home, right? Yeah. It's always summer at your apartment. And from my perspective, it's always Christmas at Bill's. Oh, yep. that's nice. Because <laughs> you're right on the water. Bill is connecting to audio, and he'd like to know when he gets here that this is actually a fairly attractive freeze. Mm -hmm. You can be frozen in really, really terrible ways, and this isn't. This is kind of a funkular, Bill. Um, but while Bill is connecting, I'd love to address Susan's question about how we get to the show it is now and what, how that happens in design. Rachel, if you want to address that. Uh, I'd love to. Susan, thank you for your question. Um, I'll try not to... Uh have any uh, spoiler alerts because it sounds like you didn't see the whole show. Um, <laughs> th there are actually a couple of answers. Um, Jackie could talk a little bit about it too. Um, often when there's a, a rainstorm, um, we, we will negate the wigs or for heat. Um, there are different reasons why we might negate them, but um, you will only see Jim wearing the wig in photographs because the photographs were taken when were they taken on our final dress? Yeah. 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 Um, so we had a whole conversation. I mean, you you all know this um, show has been two years in the making. Um, we started talking about it in 2019. And so the designs are something that is developed prior to the actors um, coming into the conversation. Uh, and I hope Bill can join us in this conversation because we often have a lot of talks about the actors we know very well. Um, I enjoy designing for the character as well as the actor. And I think in part, the wigs are part of that character design. And um, I love working with wigs. So we designed it prior to the actors coming into the rehearsal space, which makes for an interesting conversation. When we're in rehearsal, they may develop the character differently than we imagined. And so there's two of Bill now on my screen. Best. 
<laughs> Hi, Hi, Bill. Brown. <laughs> so we made a decision um, during the technical rehearsals, during the dress rehearsals, to open the actor up. That's a phrase that we use to the truth that they're bringing to the stage. And so he was bringing someone different than what I had imagined um, with a wig, a style, highly stylized wig. Um, and while Becky's work and the wig shop is amazing, we, the four of us, Bill, um, Jim Ridge, myself, and Becky had a conversation about what do we think this new version of the character that unfolded as we made it to the stage is. So therefore the wig got cut, as we say, and it'll probably appear in another show in the future. I have no doubt. Yeah. Welcome, oh, Bill. I'm sorry that it was complicated for you. Welcome. I have welcome. no idea. And, you know, I'm so sensitive to the fact that I'm old and people are like, oh, poor old thing. Uh, <laughs> it, but I live in a neighborhood in Chicago uh, that's very dense. And uh, sometimes the, the signal's great, most times. But, but I can't predict it anyway. Here I am. I'm glad yeah. to be here. Can I jump on that wig story? Yeah, yeah, please do. A beautiful, fabulous wig that uh, Kelsey that Kelsey we wears as Natasha was cut from another show. It was built for Kelsey. Uh, it made it to Tech Dress, and and there were those that didn't like it, and so it was cut. And we, but we knew even then it would come back, and it's a great wig. Mm -hmm. I I started build just so you you. Uh, I'm thrilled to talk about this show with your designers because as Rachel said, it, it's been in gestation for as long as a show Absolutely. we've ever produced. And we, I, I just was beside myself the first day because we've been waiting so long yeah. to tell this story together. But I'd love to start early days with this team that you've spent, you know, told so many beautiful stories with. How's it go? I mean, how did it start? Pandemic and long gestation period aside with this team. Well, I mean, Andy and Rachel and Jackie and Carrie. I mean, we've all been together for a really long time. I, I don't know. Andy, do you have any idea how many plays we've done? Ugh. Um, yeah. Yeah, ugh. No. Uh, it's, it, it feels like it's, I'm just bad at math in my head. It feels like 50. Yeah, it could easily be. but Because there, um, there are years that we've done as many as five and we've been working together for at least 20 right. years. Yeah. But I think you've been saying 50 for like 10 years ago. Oh, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> sure. But in any case, uh, when we're hired, um, when we get the scripts, we begin conversations somewhat informally because we all live in Chicago. Is Scott in here? Oh, that wasn't able to join us. Okay, okay. Uh, well, then we can talk about it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I can't remember far enough back. We did have a, in the flesh, yes, we did have physical meetings before the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. This was a long time ago. And our meetings are, uh, are four hours long easily and involve a lot of food. Um, and... Uh, everybody was so thrilled about this, this pre-pandemic, knowing that it was six people, we'd have the best that APT would have to offer. Um, it was a couple, maybe it was actually three sets, but we figured that part out. <laughs> and um, and it's funny, and it's stoppered, and it. it and the longer we worked on it, the smarter and the the. Uh, my, our opinion of this play just, you know, shot through the roof. It begins with love. It, 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 all of our meetings begin with, we love each other. We love the thing we're doing. Uh, I don't think we've done a play where we went, oh, do we have to do this play, right? I, 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 I think we've avoided that entirely. <laughs> uh, uh, but this one seemed really special and then it went away i mean we didn't even cut we were as everyone probably knows there's a design conference in spring Green that was canceled uh or limited and um and then it went away i think they went ahead and built the set am i wrong 
We began it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it did kind of live. Uh, none of us were doing live theater. I did. I got to direct three Zoom productions, two for APT. Um, but it was sort of this, you know, like dessert was up ahead. I mean, something was up ahead that we knew we were going to love doing. Uh, and along the way, we did change our mind about things, not just wigs. About, and then when you add added the actors, they changed my mind frequently. I don't know. That was a too long of answer, I'm sure. Not at all. And and when you like this process is one thing, but I mean, you read a script together and you assemble your team and Jackie's working on scripts week, yep. I mean, months ahead of the time. So yep. you're, you've got to play like if we're talking about any play, how does it get designed? How do those ideas? How does that room feel? It, it's foreign to many of us who enjoy the theater, how it begins for Andy, for Rachel, for Jackie's involvement, your ideas about a play. This one, if we want to use it as a template, but I'm excited to talk about how it gets from, we talk about drapers. How does it get from Rachel's beautiful picture to something you put on a person? Yeah. It's like magic. And I feel that way about the music and I feel that way about sound. And I just am interested in what your journey is together on that. Together, our meetings are always noisy. I'll say that. <laughs> and then everybody goes to their corners, as it were, and we keep coming back. I'm going to tell one on Andy, and then then I'll I'll shut up. So, Andy, I you wrote this music. It's the quickest you've ever set it all down. And there's a number of songs in the show. Yeah, it was everything that you hear in the show. In concept, was written by January of 2020 which is the earliest I've finished anything. Yeah. Now, here's the really fun part. Uh, it, it, <laughs> don't make me cry, but every year I, um, on my birthday, I get music from Andy Hansen. Uh, uh, sometimes it's something he's just written, sometimes it's something he's done years ago for me and put together in another way. And on his own, he went back in and the original orchestrations, if I remember correctly, were to be sort of a, a hotel orchestra, a sort of small, you know, in the lobby. Yes, you could fit it in a gazebo. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he sent me all the songs and, and most of the music, again, only reorchestrated for orchestra, for, well, as, as you said, it was the orchestrations that Sondheim used in Follies, which mm -hmm. had a sort of 30s bent, but was, uh, it was a whole nother way to go. And he said, because we've just been through this pandemic together and I just felt the audience needed something bigger. <laughs> I, I have to say, you know, uh, sitting up here and, and watching the opening, of course, every night, and, uh, you know, Jamal comes out and does the pre-show announcement. And everybody's very excited for that. And then um, the moments that we've orchestrated, I won't give it away, but uh, the moments that we've, that we've added into the opening where the actors connect with the audience are spectacular every night. Um, the audience just, there's so much love flowing in both directions. And that's because of the, the, grand, the grandeur of the orchestra, because of the way that they were staged, all these things. It's, it's pretty amazing to behold every night. That's yeah, I, I, I mean, Bill said it. I, I just felt that it needed, it needed a sense of scale appropriate to what everybody was feeling coming back to the theater. And the, the gazebo orchestra felt a little underfunded to me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite Bill Brown term, a little underfunded. <laughs> uh, Rachel, we, I, I just am hearkening back to a quick conversation you and I had in the comments at APT about how it's so Perfect. marvelous to look at when, when we get to tech often, and everybody has seen this, the actors will put on their costumes and it will feel like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening now. How do I walk in this? Um, and I love watching the first time actors walk on stage in Rachel's clothes because all of a sudden they're breathing into things. Because you're so connected to character in your design work, 
And when I was lucky enough to wear your clothes as an actor, you would always say, what do you love about your body? What do you want to celebrate? And nobody had ever asked me that. And it's the way Bill approaches act, directing the actor in front of them. It always feels like your elements, these design elements, don't feel like, oh crap, now I've got to work around all these problems. It does feel like Andy's music is underneath you and all of a sudden Jamal has that coat and you're like, oh, okay. Um, I, I know it's years of working together, but it's just really on this show in particular, feels like a gift. It's so glamorous and also so character specific. It doesn't feel like they're wearing costumes. And that's sort of miraculous because they are so, I don't know, heightened is the wrong word, but I'd love to talk about your discussions with Bill as you grew into this design. And... Uh, well, thank you for all that. I, uh, it's strange to talk about because when you're in it, you, you sort of have this weird sense of like, this is just what it is, if that makes sense. Like when things work well, you just think, this is just what it is right so to describe it is sort of hard to go back and kind of like pull it apart but so we were joking before we all came on camera about um how much how much food plays into our memories of working with each other and uh i will be very frank about the whole food theme that we create when we're designing so um the first i think the first meeting was at my house and um Andy was there, Scott, the set designer, Bill, myself. There were just four of us, right? Am I right in that? Yeah, uh, Michael Peterson, our lighting designer, uh, is on the West Coast. So he wasn't able to come to Chicago, but we are all local local to Chicago. And um, I live on the lake. So very helpful to have water as a theme in our, <laughs> in our um, view. Um, and I think I made breakfast food. I'm sure of it. I probably made scones. I probably did something with breakfast because, um, sorry, spoiler alert, there's a breakfast scene. <laughs> there's a lot of food. People eat a lot in this play. Um, Carrie's been in a very similar play, Hay Fever, where food was a huge part of it. Yep. Um, but to be really honest about the process, and then I will answer the question about character, the um, just the act of like eating together is like, I mean, think about the year and a half where the only people you were eating with were the people you lived with, right? So the gift of of sitting with a bunch of friends at a table and and sharing food and conversation about what's happened in your life. And um, so in person, eating food is really important. So you ingest the food, obviously. Um, and it is kind of the way, the, the best way I know to create because, here you are, you know, fulfilled internally and externally as you're talking and you're filling the air with sounds and, and conversation. And I just believe in designing from the inside out, not that the food was an analogy for that, but it really is important to kind of like be fully, all the senses fully firing. And the character for me is merely just a, I don't know, getting inspired by people that then seem to be internally married to the actors that are playing them. So in the case at American Players Theater, I know the actors that are playing those characters. They're cast when we start designing, um, almost always. Is that unusual, Rachel? I'm sorry to interrupt. It is unusual. Sometimes it's time before you know who's gonna wear it. I mean, it's unusual. So frankly, you know, I, um Jim Rich was one of the first actors I worked with um at APT on Cherry Orchard and you come to know the people that you're working with and playing with and you you can't help it but just invest a little bit more into getting to know them each time you work with them and and gosh the, I guess the hardest thing is when the character doesn't match the actor meaning they're playing someone terrible like evil um, wretched, they just, you know, but none of these characters are that way. So all these characters in Rough Crossing are lovable and and flawed in some way, but flawed in a way that makes them more lovable. And so this one was really easy for me because I really just designed for the person, the person wearing the clothes, but also the person that is the character. So I don't know. I said to Carrie, I think during dress rehearsals, I I feel like this, this one was very easy for me. And I don't mean to make light of the fact that my job is easy, but 
it was everything I want to work on. This kind of play is everything I ever want to work on. A hundred rough crossings. That's all I want to do. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jackie? I mean, because you are, you've got your hand on the wheel now. Everybody else is, as you said, in your homes in Chicago, and you've got to keep the thing on the tracks, including all those design elements. And as our audience knows, we're doing these shows six, seven times a week, which is very unusual for APT. So both the wear and tear on the beautiful things <laughs> and how things can kind of stretch and grow outside of their normal boxes when you get to play a bunch. How's it going? Yeah, I think it's going really great. You know, uh, uh, Bill always says, you know, if he comes back to see the show a second time after opening, after we've done it for a while, he says the only thing that'll ever disappoint him is if it's the same as when he left. So uh, I think that, you know, it's interesting uh, as much as you sit in the rehearsal room with the scene or as many times as you run through it before you get to the tech process, before you get to opening, there's something different about running it and especially running it the way we're doing it this year where we're running it seven and eight times a week. Um, it just, uh, for one thing, um, the actors just have a sense of confidence about the work that wow. they don't honestly normally have because rep is so hard and so scary um, to do a show when you haven't done it for 13 days. Many times the uppermost thought in your head is let's just do it kind of the same way we did it last time. But with this kind of a run, people are being able to explore little um, eddies, little alleyways that they maybe didn't wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have had the freedom to explore before. So, uh, uh, you, uh, Bill, this will be a surprise to you. But um, during the the Mad Dog sequence, not to give it away, but there's a there's a drink called a Mad Dog in the play that David Daniel brings, and he's now he had experimented with a couple of different ways of presenting that drink, and we've gone back to the howl because um, I was like, one day I was like, well, let's just try it again and see if it works with this audience. And it was a smash hit. So, um, so we've kept it's that nice. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even, uh, and sort of bigger picture things too, like, um, you know, Jim and, uh, Jim and Kelsey and Marcus as Ivor and Natasha and Turai um, in the second act, they, um, you know, Jim was sort of feeling like, I really feel like we need to get back to the central problem the mother is coming up for sale we need to keep getting back to mother is coming up for sale and keep moving the story forward and so we had a collective discussion about that and we came up with a way to do it that i think is really true to what bill directed and also sort of um heightens our stakes a little bit and gives the second act a little bit more urgency now um and i think that's that's going really well so uh it's a it, it really is a gift this year of being able to do that sort of repetition and to come out in front of these audiences every night and be like okay what are we going to try today and to be able to do something and be like oh that didn't really quite work we're going to discard that we're going to move on to the next thing so um to do 41 shows of a show and to keep it fresh and um to keep it lively and to keep entertaining everybody every night um i think uh it's it's not something we normally do but everybody here i feel like is really rising to that challenge so that's great to hear. That's great. I was thinking, Bill, about... Yes, go ahead. No, I can't say it enough. I, I mean, Jackie and I, I don't know. I, I, we need like three words when, uh, for when most times you need 30, right? Right. I, I mean, we have a kind of shorthand and we have similar taste. I, I think it's fair to say. And uh, uh, we love the event of it. We love the event of rehearsing. Uh, and it, it's not only is it a joyous room, but it's um, it's well taken care of, uh, you know, because of Jackie. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have a David Daniel Award that we give away for like extraordinary generosity of spirit. And I don't know how we kept the wheels on the thing without Jackie Singleton this year. <laughs> I do not know. I do not know. Um, I, I was just pinging on to the collaborative nature of this art and what it, what core company brings those actors in terms of storytelling and how it always feels like our core designers and directors bring 
to the process because of the years of collaboration, because of your familiarity with each other and how grateful I am in the regional theater that we're able to do that, that we're able to continue to grow and learn together. There's something about the years of proximity that buys us trust, um, the ability to be brave and honest with each other. And the, the plays that come out of these kind of long collaborations are always so, I, I don't know, deeply satisfying. I'm this close to crying all year. So I just have got no game. But, but it really, this process and being in the room with you all when I was able to be has been so special because of my great respect for your work. And everybody is working at the highest level that I have seen us all work at. And this is these artists in front of me right here, but, and, and, those, and those artists on stage. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. I, I, we've had some comments from the audience, not a lot of questions. Um, Susan, yes, I love Kelsey's dress too. And I have to say that the, uh, the actors are always very excited to see the renderings. Uh, and Kelsey saw that dress and she was like, here I go, back to the gym. There's nothing as motivating <laughs> as, a, as a Rachel Healy cocktail dress to get you back doing squats. <laughs> Maybe I need one. <laughs> okay. It's a motivator. Yeah. Uh, and also, the um, does Jamal eat during the whole show? Well, there is some, in fact, there is quite a bit, not to let anything away. There is some food, yes. Um, during the rebuild, one of the of the stage, one of the great things that was added for us backstage was that we have a kitchen now that's um, for prop food uh, directly off backstage, right? And the whole refrigerator is filled with Rough Crossing. Oh gosh! <laughs> well, we're not in rep, so Rough Crossing can have all the room at once. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wanted to. Can I comment on the food for a second? Yes, please. Okay, so. The food to me is always such a like funny thing because um, from where you, the audience sit, you actually probably don't see all the food. There is a reveal and there's a verbiage about the food. There's a laundry list of food throughout the whole show. So um, you don't actually see the food, but I think one would assume that the food is probably fake and it is not, it is not, I mean, you should see all the uh, so so in rehearsal jackie um does a report every every day so everybody that is working on the show gets to see um what the report is the majority of the notes were about food for rehearsal um not about acting because they were just having so much fun that like there weren't a lot of comments about acting or or <laughs> but anyway so you see this list of foods and then you'd see this list of like um the butter was cut or whatever, because that means that real butter is not needed. So now some of it is faked. But right. as the as the play goes into performance, um, Jackie always sends a note out to everyone on the team saying, do you want to continue to get these messages? So we get a report after all of you see the show. Um, it doesn't include names of people that attended. Um, sometimes if there's like, a, you know, a special thing that happens, uh, like a birthday or something. Um, so I got to see the note about um, some food that got on the costume. And that to me is like, well, of course it's gonna happen. I mean, how many times have you all eaten and you get something on your shirt or your pants or whatever, right? So there's a team of wardrobe people that have to like tackle this greasy thing that got on one of Jamal's pretty suits. And I just thought it was so funny because the email chain of like all the details of like, I, I use this method to get it out or my grandmother used this method to get it out or what about this? Have you tried this? I mean, then there's a whole team of people that like respond to the email. Bill, I don't know if you saw it, but it was just yeah. so funny to me about all the versions of how to get out this tiny little stain <laughs> on Jamal's suit that probably no one would have seen anyway in the future performances. But it's it just is what it is. I know there's going to be tons of food and some of it's going to get on the costumes. And that's just what it is. I love those reports. And they do <laughs> take utterly take on the personality of the stage manager. It's like getting to chat with you before I go to bed. I always wait for the report from the shows. And it's like a little visit. Yeah, I appreciate it. This is also as close to a musical as we have ever done. Andy Hansen. 
Mm -hmm. And we're so thrilled. Brenda DeVita and I, for two people who are arts administrators at a classical theater, would like to see musicals every day. We love them. (laughs) We love them so much. And I love that there's so much music in Shakespeare. But I remember 10 minutes into this first tech dress that I saw, you were sitting behind me in the back row of the Hill Theater. And I was like, it was everything I'd hoped for. But how does it work to do and Bill, you said this to do. Let's just, also I remember about other shows. It's, it's basically a musical. Let's just add. Let's just add more. Just make it longer. Yeah. Add another number. <laughs> yeah. So we could this time. We actually did it. How is it working on that hill with those real musical numbers? Uh, that that is an interesting technical challenge um, because we decided going in we didn't want the actress to wear microphones. In part of the reason for me is I don't like the sound of that. Um, not only the disconnect between the speaking and the singing, but I also, there's something about amplification that I find um, unpleasant. So the, the goal was to try and craft musical numbers that could be sung by the actors without any amplification. So I had to pay attention to make sure that I was writing songs that were within everybody's preferred singing range. And then it's about getting the balance of the orchestration or the piano accompaniment correct so that the thing that pops is the voice. And then the last technical concern is we just set a level for the pre-recorded accompaniment that allowed the voices to dominate. Mm-hmm. But in, in terms of, um, I, I just wanted to add, we do approach, I think every show we work on as though it's a musical, but this one I went over the top with that and decided this one is a musical. So there's an overture and there's an entr'acte uh, between, you know, during the intermission, there's a piece of music that plays just before we start a part two. And if the audience takes it in or not, I, it's not going to disappoint me if people don't even notice that it's there. For me, it's as much there for the actors and for Jackie and for the people working on the shows as it is for the audience. And then, um, we have the big, <laughs> we call it the MGM ending. There's a cue <laughs> as, as the play ends and two of the characters have a loving moment that is literally like the, we've irised out into a the end card. And it's, it's the most over the top I have gone with that approach. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, can I just say he makes it sound like that's easy? <laughs> uh, uh, but that's a lot of balls in the air. And when... As we went into the house and we were committed to not adding mics, and, and there's nothing wrong with mics. We've used mics in other shows, but it, it, when, a, when someone goes from speaking to singing, you don't want to add something. You don't you want to keep it in the same ballpark. And it involved not just lots of technical issues about where the sound was coming from, but the actual orchestration and the actual composition of these songs. Uh, and I, I just stood back in awe as he kept finessing it and, and refining it, uh, and it, 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 and the and now the the it just seems easy, but uh, you know it's easy if you're Andy Hansen. That's what I said. Thank you, Bill. And the choreography, Bill. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it's there's choreography. It's so we all want to do it together. <laughs> Yeah, who did that choreography? You did. Oh, you did. <laughs> okay, this is the biggest joke of all. So uh, months before we started, I sent an email out to all the actors that um, if you have tap shoes, please bring them to rehearse. Uh, you'll you'll need to bring clothes to move in. And I set up this thing that was mean and terrifying. I. Um, I, I was actually a singer before I was an actor, but I was never a dancer, I promise you. <laughs> so um, uh, I got by by hiding in the back if, if it came to that. But I decided I wanted to choreograph it because I figured if I could do it, they could do it, right? I, I tortured them for a while, but the, when we came in, and that day, I think you put, yeah, in the in the rehearsal uh, 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 announcement, please wear clothes to move in. 
the most terrifying sentence in the American that, theater. That's what you ever want to say. And then we figured it out. Really, we figured it out. All of us. It, the way actors do. I, I mean, there's an orchestral interlude in the finale to Act One that Andy beautifully wrote in. And the song is sort of Bodio Do. It is a kind of 30s, that's fair to say, right? But the story yes. of the song is, oh my God, what is <laughs> happening to us, right? So, so the, it, what would have been a dance break was, oh, what are we, are you, oh, hey, can I, I mean, was this confusion of people uh, facing everything that's wrong and no ability to come to terms with it and led to Kelsey, who is, is, uh, Natasha is given a piece of music that she's never seen or heard. But like you do, uh, she turns the audience and sings it like she, like she wrote it herself. And it eventually the whole group gets in and, and it's much more demented. But um, I, I, I just wanted to, to make the movement come out of what we as a group were doing. And that's, I mean, yeah. And Jamal decided he had actually choreographed the, the play within the play. <laughs> Check it out if you come a second time. <laughs> does it behind them? I okay. love that so much. And, and if it's not right, well, he just gets so upset. Um, but uh, everybody had a hand in that. That's fair to say, isn't it, Jackie? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, well, 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 I can do this. Okay. <laughs> well, as the choreographer for the play within the play was like, was like, oh well, I think we should do this here, and we're oh, like. Wait, choreographer <laughs> yeah 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 everybody was a choreographer <laughs> but you know that's the way i i like a rehearsal to go i i walked in with two uh, for example jim rich's character i had a completely other idea based on a production i had been in playing uh the actor um um fish yeah, fish uh 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 in in um the original play, uh, the play's the thing. Well, those they're different characters. It's different. It's, he has adapted it freely. But the Torai in that original, uh, in both the original and this one, is somewhat, what's the word? He's a powerful man. Um, and, 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 and could be looked on as sometimes malevolent. Well, uh, Jim came in with this, with the idea of why he's that way. So he brought a, a rather unique vulnerability to it, which I, you know, day one, I was like, yeah, let's do your version. Uh, um, and as I listened to it and, work, and, and we rehearsed it, I had worked with years ago as an actor with the, uh, the original director of, of, of Rough Crossing, Peter Wood. And I realized that Tom, Tom Stoppard had done uh, six or eight plays with, with, uh, with Peter Wood by then. But Tom wrote the character of Turai as Peter Wood. <laughs> he, he, I mean, Peter had the ability to give you a note and he would start there. Well, um, I feel there's something here I mean, in just the gentlest way. And you knew you were dead. <laughs> you knew you were going to be laid out on the floor when he used his quiet voice. And by the end of it, you know, I was in a play a hundred years ago with Frank Langella and uh, Kathleen Quinlan, and they were doing a love scene. And they're wonderful actors. He did this thing that ended with and if you decide to play it like a B movie scene, I shall leave the theater. Right? And uh, we decided to eschew uh, British accents mostly in this production. But it really, I, I heard, I went, oh my God, he's written that. It, and Peter directed it, he must have noticed. <laughs> but anyway. I love that you've been connected to the play this long. It's I mean, crazy, isn't it? It's and the, that 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 uh, um, that place. The thing I did was at Court Theater, and the director of the 
and the artistic director of the Hungarian National Theater directed it, uh, Laszlo Marton. Marton. You, you, well, I've worked with Laszlo. Yeah, yeah, I thought so, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, I can't tell you, 20 years ago, easily. We only have a couple minutes left, but I, there, there's a question, um, Andy, are, or, or are we releasing any of this music? Is it going to be available for purchase or download? Um, the immediate answer right now is no. There is an issue with the fact that the lyrics for this, for this production are written by Tom Stoppard. So I, I can't um, do anything without Tom Stoppard's permission as regards those songs. Although obviously all the music is mine, um, I I thank you for the question, and I don't know maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and see it again. It lives in our lives. Thank you for joining us. Oh, here, thank you for joining us today. Register for future Beyond the Place. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah is putting useful information in the chat if you want to come and, and see us again. I'm, I'm so grateful for your time today. I wish you were all here. It's a gorgeous day for two shows. Jackie Singleton. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful today. It is oh, a God. beautiful day. I'm, again, grateful for your time. So grateful for your artistry and your work. I'm grateful to this audience who keeps showing up to learn more about this work. We, we can't thank you enough for staying with us through this crazy year. And... Come and see some more plays. We got some more plays coming. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I had a mimosa. That's what we were missing. Breakfast I'm, together. I'm walking over to a Bloody Mary right Oh, my God. Bill, I just to say, I know people are leaving the room, but we did say what I want is a cookbook and pictures of the plays and whatever meals you have made on your design meetings. And I want, I would buy that. I would give it to friends for Christmas. I want the three sisters design meeting meal. I want the, oh my gosh, I miss that you. That is a brilliant <laughs> idea. And, and remember the breakfast we did in the parking lot for uh, Hey Fever? Yes, breakfast with the blisses. Yep. We were making waffles to order out the window of my apartment, That's all right. wearing our pajamas That's at right. midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I love you all. Love you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.